Hello, 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 it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we finished talking about the digestive system. Today, we'll talk about your excretory system, part of homeostasis. And we will start this by discussing the anatomy and the embryology of the kidneys. As you know, you have two kidneys, two ureters, one urinary bladder and one urethra with an internal sphincter and an external sphincter. Now let's get started. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum retention. So what is homeostasis? Homeo means similar and stasis means stable. Basically, this is how your body keeps your internal environment constant. Please don't be fooled. Homeostasis is not the same as hemostasis. Homeostasis is the stabilization of your body environment. Hemostasis, on the other hand, is to keep the blood stable, i.e. to cause a blood clot and prevent blood loss when you cut yourself. So you can technically argue that hemostasis is a subtype of the broader term homeostasis. Homeostasis is not the maintenance of a perfectly constant, it's nearly constant circumstances in your body. There is normal fluctuation in nature. All body systems contribute to homeostasis, including respiratory system, cardiovascular system, excretory system, etc. Example is how your lungs and kidneys tightly regulate your blood pH. And therefore, pathology or disease could be defined as disrupted homeostasis. That was beautiful. How your body works. Let's get the good stuff into your body, which includes oxygen and nutrients. Let's get the bad stuff out of your body via metabolism, detoxification, and excretion. And as you know, excretion happens through the kidney and through the colon as well. And let's communicate among different body parts. You have the nervous communication system, which is super fast, and the hormonal system, which is slow. Your lungs will get carbon dioxide out of your body, get lovely oxygen into your body, the digestive system will get nutrients into your body, and the cardiovascular system will distribute the oxygen and nutrients to all your body cells. How do I metabolize? How does my body perform all of these crazy pathways that I studied in my biochemistry book? You can thank your liver for this. Next, the kidneys. Functions of the kidneys are many, including filtration of plasma. The good stuff should go back to the blood. This is called reabsorption. But the bad stuff should be dumped into the urine, and this is called excretion. The kidney can also regulate your acid base status and your blood pH. And don't forget that your kidney has endocrine function, such as the secretion of renin, such as the secretion of the active form of vitamin D, such as the secretion of erythropoietin to boost the formation of your red blood cells, and many others. Excretory system. You have kidneys, you have ureters, you have urinary bladder, and urethra with the sphincters. What's the name of the muscle in the wall of the urinary bladder? It's called the trusser muscle. Parasympathetic will help it contract, but the sympathetic will help the detrusor muscle relax. Is it rest digest or is it fight flight? If it's rest digest, parasympathetic, I'm resting, I'm digesting, I'm in the toilet, so I'm gonna squeeze my bladder and contract that muscle. Parasympathetic will contract the detrusor muscle, but it will relax the urethral sphincter. Sympathetic fight flight. When I'm running from a tiger, do you think I have time to go to the bathroom? No. Therefore, relax the wall of the bladder, but contract that sphincter to keep the urine in. If you remember your gastrointestinal tract, we had what in the anal canal? Internal sphincter and external sphincter. And the internal was involuntary. The exact fact applies to the internal versus external urethral sphincters. The internal is involuntary, under autonomic control, versus the external, which is under somatic control. The internal is involuntary, which means sympathetic is gonna contract that sphincter to hold the urine in, but parasympathetic will relax that internal sphincter to let the urine out. Remember when we said that the lymph node is a kidney-shaped structure? Yep, by the same token, the kidney is a kidney-shaped structure, I mean a bean-shaped structure, located in the abdomen, 
behind the peritoneal cavity lateral to the vertebral column and they extend from T12 to L3 vertebrae. If I have an issue in my kidney, such as kidney stone, where do you think that pain will radiate? Down here to my groin, which is actually not shocking because if you study embryology, you will recall that the kidneys started here in the pelvic area and then they kept going up until they ended in the abdomen beneath the diaphragm. So it makes sense that their pain is gonna refer to wherever they came from. And to understand the theory of visceral pain, please watch my video called cholecystitis, which you can find on my YouTube channel. Anatomically speaking, the two kidneys are not at the same horizontal level. In fact, the right kidney is slightly lower. Why is this? Because there is a liver on the right side, but there is no liver on the left side. The liver presses on the right kidney. Embryology time. We have talked about this before in my biology playlist, so here's a quick review. Fertilization, then cleavage, which is mitotic division. Then I have the blastula formation, implantation into the uterine wall, bilaminar embryo, and then trilaminar embryo. The trilaminar is endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Here is the bilaminar embryo. Pause and review. The inner cell mass, particularly the epiblast, is going to give us the trilaminar embryo. Endoderm on the inside, mesoderm in between, ectoderm on the outside. What does the ectoderm give us? Well, we said on the outside, so surface ectoderm. This is the epidermis of your skin, hair, nail, etc. Oh, so it's on the outside. Yeah. Also, don't forget the ectoderm gives you your nervous system. Central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. All right, thank you so much. How about the endoderm? This is on the inside. The endothelium or the epithelium of the digestive system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, and other accessory organs. How about the mesoderm in between? What do you have in between? I have bones, I have cartilages, I have tendons, I have muscles, I have blood, I have lymph, I have blood vessels, lymph vessel wall. I have the dermis of the skin, but the epidermis was ectodermal, if you remember. I have adrenal cortex because the adrenal medulla was ectodermal. And I have the dura mater. How about the kidney then? Well, embryologically speaking, the kidney is kind of in between, right? It's not on the inside like the endothelium that lines your stomach. It's also not on the outside like the epidermis that covers your skin. It's in the middle, so it's a mesodermal structure. Okay, medicosis, there are many parts in the mesoderm. Well, let's be specific. I meant the intermediate mesoderm. And then the intermediate mesoderm will give us two separate structures for the kidney. The first one, metanephric cap, which will give you the nephron, which is the red part in this picture. And the mesonephric duct, which will give me the ureteric bud, which will become the ureter, and then the renal pelvis, and then those lovely collecting tubules. And this is represented by the yellow in this picture. Some pathology integration. What is pyelonephritis? Itis means inflammation. What's pylo? Pelvis. Oh, the pelvis of the kidney, the sink of the kidney, the drainage of the kidney. Yes, this area is the pylo. Nephro is the nephron. Oh, so pyelonephritis is inflammation of like everything in the kidney. That's true. That's why it's horrible. And that's why if you have pyelonephritis, you will end up in the hospital. The red versus the yellow, both are mesodermal. Metanephric cap versus mesonephric duct. Each kidney has about 1 million of these nephrons. Let's talk about the nephron. Here is my nephron, and at the end I have collecting tubules, and then collecting ducts, and then minor calices. A calyx is like a chalice. Oh, it is beautiful. It looks like that. Oh, to collect fine wine then. Yes, but this one collects urine. Kind of similar. After the minor calices, what do you get? Major calices and then the renal pelvis, the pyolo, and then the ureter, and then the bladder, and then the urethra, and then to the street. But don't pee in the street. And for sure, don't pee in fresh water because this is how Egyptians spread cercaria all over the country. Schistosoma hematobium action. I am from Egypt, so I know what I'm talking about. But hey, medicosis, that was in the past. All right, fair enough, Cody. Where do you get your urine from? Well, where do you think I get my saliva from? Where do I get my sweat from? Where do you get your precious crocodile tears from? 
from the blood. That's why blood vessel has to exist here because we will filter that blood and then we will make urine to excrete out of your body. The good stuff will be reabsorbed back to the blood, but the bad stuff down the toilet or as Dr. Edward Golian used to say, toilette. So we have arterioles here and then there is the glomerular capillary tuft. It's a capillary after the arterioles, which makes sense because we go aorta, big arteries, arterioles, capillaries. Oh, that makes sense. And then we have what? Bowman's capsule. And now the arteries have ended, the vessels have ended, and we're starting tubule land. Bowman's capsule is the first part of the nephron. And then this is the proximal convoluted tubule. And then this is the loop of Henle. And then this is the distal convoluted tubule. Then you have collecting tubules, collecting duct, minor calesis, major calesis, renal pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra, and to the toilette. Pause and review and practice recall. Let's zoom out. The outer part of the kidney is the cortex, which is the crust, but the core is the medulla. And here is medicosis logo going down the toilette. Cortex on the outside, medulla on the inside. Let's dig deeper. Let's start here. Ureter, go up, renal pelvis, pyelo, and then major calyx. These are minor calyces. Before you know it, you are in the pyramid. The tip of the pyramid is the papilla. So let's do it from beginning to end. All right, arterioles are perfusing the kidney. You have afferent arterial going to the kidney and efferent arterial leaving the glomerulus. Then this is the glomerulus, which is capillary tough. Then the nephron is going to start. Here is the Bowman's capsule. Proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting tubule, collecting ducts, minor calyces, major calyces, renal pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra, boom, we did it. Pause and review. What are the names of these capillaries? You can call them glomerular capillaries or you can call them the capillary tufts, which lie inside the vicinity, the concavity of the Bowman's capsule. Who made these capillaries? Afferent arterial. All right, then the capillaries will go here. And then from those capillaries comes efferent arterial. You know why? Because the word afferent means towards, but the word efferent means from afferent towards the capillary tuft, but efferent is away from the capillary tuft. Oh, I get it. Let's follow the efferent then. All right, efferent arterial, efferent arterial, arterial will give us capillaries. These capillaries are around the kidney tubules. What do you call them? Peritubular capillaries. Why is this important? Because remember, not everything that's in the tubule is going to end up in the urine. The good stuff will be reabsorbed back to the blood. Which blood? The blood of the peritubular capillaries. That's why. Ergo, your kidney could be considered as a portal system. What the flip is that? A portal system is a system consists of two capillary beds connected in series and there is la porte between them. A porte means door in French. La porte is French. Porta is Spanish. From Latin origin, portal system, I have la porta between first capillary bed and second capillary bed. How is this applicable to the kidney? Easy. Here's the first capillary bed. Here's the second capillary bed. What is la porta here? The efferent arterial. Is this portal system peculiar to the kidney? No, other organs have portal circulations or portal systems. Do you remember the portal vein? Yeah, where's the first set of capillaries? Here in the gut wall for absorption of nutrients. Where's the second capillary bed? Inside the liver. They are called liver sinusoids, teeny tiny capillaries. And what is the connection or la porta between them? This will be the portal vein. A third example is the hypothalamo hypophyseal portal circulation between the hypothalamus and the end. Who else is gonna teach you like this? Your professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. Hey kids, does anyone know what's the difference between save and save as? What happened to the good old days? Arterial supply of the kidney, of course, starts here at the aorta and we go down. Here's your abdominal aorta. Abdominal aorta is here and this is the renal arteries. A renal artery to the right kidney and one to the left kidney. Because the abdominal aorta is on your left side and the inferior vena cava is on the right side, Ergo, 
the right renal artery is longer than the left renal artery. Conversely, the left renal vein is longer than the right renal vein. Let's follow the arterial supply. Here is my abdominal aorta. Here is my renal artery going to the kidney. The renal artery is going to branch into segmental arteries, each to one segment of the kidney. And then the segmental artery will become interlobar artery between lobes of the kidney. The lobe is the pyramid. After this, I'll arch on top of that pyramid. When you arch, you are an arcuate artery and then interlobular artery this was a lobe but this is a lobule the interlobular artery is the one that will give you the afferent arterial which is here which goes to the bowman's capsule towards the glomerular capillary tuff and then the afferent artery is gonna leave don't forget the peritubular capillaries and then the peritubular capillaries, like any capillaries, is a connection between an arterial side and a venous side. The venous side will take you to venules and then bigger veins, and then you add the same names as the arteries. So we will go to interlobular vein, and then arcuate vein, and then interlobar vein, and then segmental vein, and then renal vein, and then back to the inferior vena cava, which will take me back to the right atrium of the heart. So we talked about the arterial part and the venous part. Let's talk about the urine part or the excretory part or the nephron part. All right, here's the nephron. All of this is nephron. And then you have collecting tubules, collecting ducts, minor calices, major calices, renal pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra. Anatomically speaking, your Bowman's capsule and the capillary tuft belong to the cortex, which is the outer part of the kidney. However, the loop of Henle belongs to the medulla. And based on this, we can divide the nephrons into two types. Those whose nephrons are very superficial, we call them cortical nephrons. And those whose nephrons are still in the cortex, but they are deep to the point that they came close to and near to the medulla. Oh, juxta, nearby, yeah, near the medulla. Juxta medullary nephrons. The juxta medullary nephrons usually have very long loop of Henleys, and we have peritubular capillaries around them, and they acquire a special name in this case, we call them vasa recta. So vasa recta is nothing more than peritubular capillaries surrounding those very long loops of the juxta medullary nephrons. And here is everything you need to know in one slide. Please pause and review and bring a piece of paper and write it down. After mastering the embryology and the anatomy of the kidney, it's time for you to learn about kidney physiology and the glomerular filtration rate and the story of sodium reabsorption versus sodium secretion, potassium reabsorption versus potassium secretion, chloride story, calcium story, urea story, creatinine story, and even the micturition reflex. All of this can be yours when you download my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. You download it once and you keep it for you forever. If you want the kidney pharmacology, i.e. diuretics, check out my cardiac pharmacology course. Or you can try my brand new surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my course. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.